Hello, and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show audio podcast. With your host, Kenneth Bacor. This is Episode 8, recorded on November 30th, 2018. Hello, this episode was originally going to be a video episode, but unfortunately the video quality did not turn out too well. So what I wanted to do is use the audio for the podcast. So I hope you enjoy this podcast of me doing a show with uh, three other UK enthusiasts when I was in the Manchester area at the end of November. Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. This is a special show. It's not a special edition, but it's special because I have my UK friends here, some of my UK friends. I happen to be in country, and I thought, what a great opportunity to get some real EV experts on my show, because you don't want to hear from me all the time, <laughs> and, <laughs> and talk about stuff. They're turning up. Exactly, exactly. Well, thanks, guys, for joining me. If you don't know who these are, the gentlemen are, I have Jonathan Porterfield from Eco Cars. Everybody knows him as Mr. Rapid but he's a wealth of information beyond that and he's going to share some of that with us uh to my right immediate right i have nicholas ramo ev nick as uh, you're known yep. for his trials and tribulations in the ev world and uh, nick's been doing a lot to promote the ev landscape and of course uh, james coates uh, aka james uh, and kate everybody knows that great youtube channel uh we wish kate were here but unfortunately somebody had to watch the little one Exactly. And these guys drove a few, a couple of hours out of their way to come and see me. Yeah, a couple of, I think about two hours. Yeah. Like that, yeah. So. Well, we cheekily combined it with a, an EV delivery, didn't we? Between That's us. okay. It worked out for me. So I'm thrilled that you guys could uh, <clears throat> could be with me, and thank you very much. Uh, we've got I got a good show. We went through a little bit of the topics just before uh, filming, but you know uh, I'll start talking about stuff like I usually do, guys, and then please pipe in and add your mm -hmm. comments and uh, make this open yeah. and. Uh, and informative. So one of the, the things that we still, I think we can all say that we get emails and comments when, and when, we out, when we're out talking to people is the, the, the fear and I guess the doubt that some of the um, uh, media still threw up there and people think about electric cars being actually not as efficient for um, emissions as we say that they are, right? Yes, they don't have any tailpipes, so they don't they don't emit any uh, greenhouse gases, but a lot of people still think that the building of the cars, the mining of the, the battery materials, the manufacturing of the cars actually contributes more than what a normal petrol or diesel car would over the, the, the cradle uh, to well, as we talk about, the lifespan of the vehicle. Well, since we're in Europe, I thought I'd bring up this uh, EEA report. This is a European Environment Agency. Um, hopefully it's an important body here in the UK. And they've come out with a report that uh, kind of puts an argument on that. that so even though uh, fully electric cars emit zero greenhouse gases uh, as you're running it, obviously, but th through the life cycle, there's a lot of other pollutants that can be had, you know, uh, compared when you look at gasoline and diesel engines. Um, and those emissions are usually in the, in the, higher, uh, the higher amounts that are given out in the production phase of electric cars. Uh, but again, if you're using your EV over the long periods of time, then you reap those benefits. Yeah. That yeah. makes sense, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, th this argument, every time it comes up, what's really annoying is when people measure EVs, because they have no tailpipe emissions, everyone measures the whole process. But yeah. obviously with the petrol cars, what they always forget to mention is that the refining, the transporting of the fuel, the running of the petrol stations... I don't understand why for EVs the whole process is taken for account, but for a, you know, a, a normal combustion car, it, they, they don't, they just include the tailpipe. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I think as well, making a vehicle, be it hybrid, LPG, gas, as you call it, or an EV, it all takes some resources from somewhere to make the seats and the doors and the glass and the mm -hmm. electronics. It is all hungry for stuff, so. It is sad that the EV is picked out and has the finger pointed at it, but it's still, it's still a thing that gets us from A to B. It's just, over its lifetime, it is so much better for the environment. Mm. Yeah, going back to what Nick said about um, extraction of crude oil, uh, refining, transportation, 
the, the energy required for that is huge. Mm. Um, and uh, people don't often take that into account because you simply go to a petrol station, you take the fuel, you fill it up and you yep. drive away. And it's only then they start to count the CO2 emissions mm -hmm. that, that uh, come out from the, uh, the tailpipe. But also there's the, the ongoing servicing, the oils, the fluids that go through the, the car as well. So it's, it's not fair, as John said and Nick said, just to, just to tar it with the, the manufacturing, manufacturing costs. But there are, as you said, this, uh, this article here to, uh, quashing that really, saying yep. that um, over the lifetime of the car, it's, it, it's, it's not quite as true as people, as people think. Yeah. So. yeah, I mean, another point, important to pick up on that is, I think many people, I think it's Robert from Fully Charged, who said mm -hmm. it quite a lot, that the one thing about EVs is they get greener. The more we drive them, the greener they exactly. get. And, yeah. and if you live in Orkney, where obviously uh, Jonathan's from, and you're pretty much powering it 100% off renewables, mm. it's, it's green, very green, extremely yeah. green. And the, the UK grid at the moment is we're building a lot of coal because there's a nuclear power station down and get, gas is very expensive. But in the UK, the grid is getting cleaner and cleaner and cleaner and cleaner every year. And that's a great point. So you do have to look at where the energy comes from and how that's sourced as well as part of the equation. But the study uh, basically uh, shows that about 17 to 30% less um, greenhouse gas emissions are from electric vehicles, even inclusive of that wheel to well than their comparable ICE cars. Just one other point there, Ken, that um, mm -hmm. the, we talk about greenhouse gas emissions, predominantly CO2. People forget particulate matter, yep. which is uh, which yep. is the, the big one. Which is uh, um, the the health implications of that are just huge yep. and often forgotten. The real, we yep. all just say CO two, CO two, CO two, yep. but no particulates, and and that yep. just gets forgotten. So that's yep. it's, it's good to remember that one. Uh, you you'll, you'll still get some particulates. I mean, you get some tire wear, you get yeah. brake dust. Yeah. I mean, that that you can't yeah. get yeah. away from that with any car. No. Yeah. Um, but certainly from EVs, I mean, with a lot of regenerative braking, you're using a little bit yeah. less yeah. brakes. Yeah. Your brakes are lasting longer. So we had an article not too long ago in the in the British press about uh, brake dust and t extra tyre wear. I think even someone mentioned like, well, the roads are going to run, uh, going to wear out more because the, the EVs are that little bit heavier. Absolute nonsense. Mm -hmm. But like you said, the the regen <laughs> braking. There's quite a number of taxi companies in the UK. One in particular in Cornwall called CNC Taxis. Mm. They've got. 12, 15 EVs, uh, vans, uh, ENV 200s and LEAF. Some of them have got 120,000 miles wow. on the same set of brake pads. Well, yeah. So that whole argument about brake dust, it is absolute rubbish. That's even way more than I thought. I'm <laughs> hoping to get 60,000 kilometers out of mine, which I'm hearing is pretty realistic. So... Uh, very interesting. So anyway, folks, I mean, you can read, check out the study, um, and there's lots of studies. It's not just European. There's American studies, uh, other parts of the world that are doing these kind of studies that just show that really that whole cradle-to-grave, wheel-to-well aspect of EVs, if you're driving it for the long term and if your energy is coming from cleaner sources, can really help to reduce and, and, and uh, the amount of greenhouse gas emissions that uh, are made. Right, so let's get into some manufacturer stuff. Um, I think one of the top stories the last week is the Nissan, of course, some of the things going on from their CEO perspective. I mean, it certainly made the news, but uh, them postponing the launch of the 60 kilowatt hour Nissan Leaf, which we were all anticipating and waiting for. I was, I think we were hoping that something was going to come uh, a couple of days ago uh, mm -hmm. from the LA show. That hasn't happened. But obviously, you know, in talking to Nissan and looking at information that they're talking about, that they, they just thought the timing wasn't good. They want, they want the dust to settle from, from what's going on corporately right now before they bring out that 60 kilowatt version. Are you guys hearing anything else? Mm. Well, I've, I've got my sort of conspiracy theory. Yeah. I'd, it could be uh, the CEO of yeah. Nissan, Mr. Goshen. Yeah. Um, you go with Carlos. It's easy Car to Carlos. Say. Yeah. All right. yeah Carlos. <laughs> Just Carlos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the new sixty kilowatt hour leaf that we're all anticipated, hopefully with thermal management, which of mm -hmm. course would be great. You know, my guesstimation is it's going to have perhaps two thirty, two hundred and forty mile range. But then you look at this new Kona with sixty four kilowatt hours. Is that right, James? Mm -hmm. Is sixty four? Sixty four usable. Same sort of price mm -hmm. range in Europe and the UK. That's got now a used provable range of around 280. Mm -hmm. So I think maybe Nissan could be as much as 60 miles short for a very similar spec sized priced mm -hmm. EV. And that's so key, maybe yeah. maybe they're like, oh, hang on, 
We, they're doing something we can't do. Perhaps it's the efficiency. Maybe we know. should re rejig it, right? Kind yeah. of thing, yeah. So maybe that's mm -hmm. why it's been pulled. Could that's be. Do you think possibly because of the usable energy that the, because the Leaf is a 60, is probably going to have, what, a 56, Nine. 57 kilowatt yeah. usable. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the cone is offering 64. So mm -hmm. seven kilowatts, if you're averaging four kilowatts per, mm -hmm. and four miles per kilowatt hour, 28 miles already. And mm -hmm. that's so the thing huge about Just in that. The yeah. efficiency, I think I've seen a bit of Robert's latest, Robert Llewellyn's latest video. I think they were averaging on their European trip in the Kona, was it 5.4 miles per kilowatt hour? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think the best I've ever done in my leaf, when we were chatting earlier, mm -hmm. it's about 4.2. Mm -hmm. So just looking at that overall thing, I think this and they're a bit short on the possible new 60. The one rumour I've heard, and obviously it's a complete rumour, I've don't, not seen any proof that it could be possible, but a lot of people have, have hinted that the new Nissan leaf will have 22 kilowatt AC for the Type 2. Um, for obviously the European mm. market, that that is that's that's mm. huge. I mean, if you think about how many 22 kilowatts stations are installed, <clears throat> if it's got Chadamo and 22. Yeah. It just really extends sort of like the the life range of the, of the of the. I think that's where they'll get the edge over the Kona. Do, do you think so? Really? I think ultimately most EV owners, well, most new perhaps possible customers. We were saying earlier again, years ago it used to be like, how fast does your car go? What does it do 0 to 60? But I think the next thing that people in the street are thinking about is how far will it actually go? And I think even if it does charge at 22 kilowatts and a lot faster, ultimately I think it's just a race for range. Mm -hmm. I really do. I, I talked about this on another show though. So how how much range do you really need? I mean, there you know you get a 300 mile car that or vehicle. In my opinion, that's enough. Yeah. I mean, you know, we'll talk about the pickup truck coming up in, in a little bit later in the show, which is which has a higher range, and I can understand for for different applications that you would use, like the you know, like the the Nissan um, uh, EVN. What is it? The uh, EMV yeah, two hundred. Yeah. Um, so obviously, it's have more heavy use, so you want to you want to have some longer ranges. But do you need more than three hundred mile range for a daily? I mean, there's, there's got to be a point where do you need more for for a daily? I, yeah, I, I don't think so. I, mean, I, I, agree. I think yeah. a high user, a high user is still under three hundred miles yeah. as a daily. But yeah. I think a lot of people can't get over that hurdle of, well, well just in case I need to drive three hundred miles, and it's redundancy, isn't it? So mm -hmm. that's my point. With yeah. A, yeah. with most diesel cars now, offering efficient diesel five six hundred miles to a tank, and they know that they can get in that car and drive six hundred miles should they need to. Yeah. But for the four years of their PCP, they might never drive more than three or four hundred miles in their stint, so they're not using that full capacity. Right. So, right. so it's, I think it's just a, a a point that they need to get over in the head more than than, mm -hmm. than actually needing it. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, joking apart, I mean, before we even started filming, me and Jonathan were actually talking about this very yeah. subject yeah. about yeah. Yeah. what is the ideal size for a battery, and to me. I think really 150 miles for the most average user is all you need. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're just carrying around a heavy battery that you're not using. You're just making the vehicle less and less efficient. I agree entirely mm -hmm. with you. Uh, I don't. I, I'm quite happy with my 40 kilowatts with the range it's got yep. in the summer and in the winter. It, for us, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's still that man in the street, that Mr. Average Joe, who wants to have that reassurance of of a three-digit figure, 300 miles, 350 miles. Yeah. And I know it, but the, and the car manufacturers have got an interest to get people into this new fangled EV from mm -hmm. their point of view mm -hmm. because they've got to sell EVs to make a profit to push the boundaries. So yeah. it's, it's, it's a catch-22 in a way. Absolutely is, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's interesting because I, I share some of what you're saying about weight, but weight for me isn't the massive user of energy. It's it's more about drag coefficient. So you look at something yes. like the Kona, yeah. comes in with a twenty eight kilowatt hour mm -hmm. battery, and it'll do nearly the range of, of cars. That are, well, it'll do a, the range of a forty kilowatt hour Leaf, for example, just based on efficiency. Yes. Um, I think round town the weight's quite a big thing, stop start traffic. But as a rule, I think manufacturers really need to start looking at getting it to cut through the air at, mm -hmm. a, a, a more efficient way. So you look at a mm -hmm. Tesla Model S, the Kona, they're pushing the boundaries, whoes the leaf um the zoe is pretty good, but the leaf especially is good, is a is a bit of a it's a bit yeah. of a drag the yeah. soul yeah. it's a bit yes. of a breeze block yeah. effect yeah. so, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. but we was, we've said many times in conversations how on earth a high undie making the cone is so efficient I think it's, it's covered not in, a lightweight thing yeah. is it? no it's covered in slippery paint 
Slippery paint. Yes, <laughs> Slippery paint. You heard it here, folks. Some breaking news. It's something to do with the gearing. I don't know. Yeah. There's something there yeah. that just makes it super efficient, yeah. which, is, uh, which is raising the bar, and I think yeah. it's got Nissan on the back foot. Or, or we're possibly going to find out they're doing a Volkswagen and they're uh, lying to us. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, yeah, so when you're talking to people, you know, range is important, but you're absolutely right, guys. I mean, I feel the same way. Um, when I do public outreach stuff, you know, people ask, well, I need, I need the biggest range. And I say, well, what's your, what's your longest trip that you'll do? Well, three times a year we go to grandma's house, you know, which is uh, 400 miles or whatever. Well, three times a year, you're going to buy a car to use it three times a year rather than getting yeah. something, as you're saying, yeah. Nick, mm -hmm. you know, something more affordable that meets 99% of your, your, your range, daily range. So one of those vehicles to do that, unfortunately, from a plug-in hybrid, um, is a really great car, the GM Volt. Now, you guys don't have the Volt here. That's a Volt as a V, correct? We have the Ampera. The Ampera. Yeah. Volkswagen yeah. Ampera, okay. is yeah. part of GM. Okay, so, so same thing, plug-in hybrid? Yeah, yeah, but they, mm -hmm. they, I think they didn't Alpa? advertise it at all. Yeah. Is it now part of Peugeot, then? It's, it, they don't make it anymore. They don't make it right. anymore. Yeah. So yeah. they stopped making it. Then I think they made it for two yeah. years, yeah. three, two, two and a half years, and then it was just dropped. Well, in North America, the Volt has done really well, and unfortunately, yeah. news came out this week that GM is shutting. You know, there's a lot of GM news, so I won't, we won't you know, spend the whole show talking about GM news, but this one pertaining to the, to the Volt, that they are shutting down that factory or the factories that build them, and they are actually ending that product line, which is too bad because as a as a stopgap measure of, of you know, uh, uh, non-electric versus full electric vehicles getting into the plug-in. Again, I'm a, I'm a big proponent of anything with a mm. plug is a good thing. Mm. Uh, and and plug-in hybrids aren't bad. You know, there's definitely good use cases. The Volt has done really well. I know a lot of owners locally that love the cars. And, you know, getting a good 80 to 90, let's say, kilometers in a day is enough mm. for most of their stuff. Mm. Yeah, that's the, that actually one of the best PHEVs I've, I've ever driven. And Kate, mm -hmm. we yes, we did. Yeah. We, um, we did. We we picked it up from one side of the country, drove right. it, ran out of range on electric. Uh, it um, yeah, drove it from one side of the country to uh, to where we live, uh, ran it out of range on electric, and it was fantastic. And it was the thing that appealed to me the most was the way that it tried to run on electric as much as it could. It would chuck the engine out as much as it could, whereas a lot of hybrids, Toyotas in particular. Mm -hmm. Tend to work in the opposite uh, the opposite fashion. It's so not pick on anybody, so, but yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, after twenty, sometime in, um, by March of twenty nineteen, these things will stop rolling off the production lines, which is too bad. Is so uh, you know, if you're if you're on the fence uh, of a Volt and you want one, especially the Gen twos, they're really nice, mm -hmm. uh, more sleeker design, nicer interiors. You know, a lot more pra a little more practicality there. Uh, definitely go out and get one. And, uh, you know, GM, uh, as I've been saying with a lot of the news that's uh, going on with them, is they want to invest more in electrification, which is good. Let's just hope they do it because they are still kind of lagging behind uh, what a lot of other guys are doing. Oh, don't get me started on a Ford. That's, a, that's another whole show. <laughs> Another quick update, uh, I did my Sonos review a little while ago and I've been tracking these guys. You guys are familiar with the Sonos guys based here in Germany. They come out with, they actually sent me an email. I'm on their email hit list now and they're sending me all kinds of press stuff. So they came out with an announcement that they've picked Continental, which apparently is the world's second largest automotive supplier. I had no idea. I only think of Continental for tires, but I guess they're doing a lot more than tires. They're going to build a Scion's electric drive unit, which is great. So it combines, of course, the motor, the power electronics, and the transmission in, in one compact unit. Um, so they were a little on the fence about where that's coming from, so re they've released that information. Now that drive unit um, is going to have a power output of 290 newton meters of torque, um, which is uh, significantly more horsepower as well of 163 PS. I don't know what that is in horsepower or BHP. Uh, Any idea? You're the math uh, guy. I think it translates to about 100. It was about yeah, because I think, I think yeah, they were talking about 110 or something originally when I first looked at it a few months ago. So it's definitely up and then uh, delivers a peak in performance of 120 kilowatts. What's that? <laughs> I'm going to work that out. You're going to work that out for me? Yeah. <laughs> click, um, click, click. Yeah. Just an interesting part about Continental, like you said, they actually make the Q motor in the Renault Zoe. Oh, so okay. So the, the Zoe will no longer have... If the Zoe has the CCS charge that we're all expecting yep. in Europe at the next launch... Continental will no longer make the motor for Zoe. Ah. So that kind of doesn't surprise me okay, that uh, Continental are trying to 
push it towards yep. another manufacturer because they're going to lose a huge contract there. So they've got to keep their business going, yeah. for sure. The battery, of course, has been, uh, they've announced a partnership with a company called er uh, Elring Klinger. Uh, I guess it's a German company by the sounds of that name, and uh, it's going to be 35 kilowatt hour capacity, um, and they're based on 51 amp hour PHV-2 cells, which is Greek to me, but means something to you because you're the engineer. Sorry, what are they again? The 51 amp hour AH PHEV-2 cells. 51 amp hours. Yeah. That's quite a lot because we, yeah. we work with... Um, uh, 500 milliamp hour, okay. five amp hour, which yeah. is a lot smaller. So. Okay, but that's quite quite a good capacity. It doesn't say if it's, it's pouch. I'm I'm guessing it's a pouch yeah, style, yeah, not so. cylindrical. Uh, and that their cobalt chemistry. That's of course making all the news is about what's yeah. going on with cobalt. That's another show eventually. Uh, that the content in these cells is much less than before. And it's so. got a is it a weed? In the front? To, to oh, it's not a weed, moss. but, you know, moss. that's... Moss. It's a moss. Well, that thing. balances out the code. <laughs> you know, it's, it's legal in Ontario now, but that's another story. Uh, yeah, it's a filter. It's a pretty weird, cool two years, filter apparently. system. Yeah. Exactly. Two years? It's yeah, two years, about yeah. two years, something it's like that. Incredible. Now, they, they so they've secured all this uh, production stuff to start moving forward, and these are long-term supply contracts. So for your, your information, Nick, that's good. I guess it's going to keep Continental going, uh, depending on how many they can pump out. They are predicting... Now, of course... The battery price is not where they thought they'd be at this point in time. We're not at the 100 uh, euro per kilowatt hour or even 100 US yet at this point. Uh, so un unfortunately, their pricing is going to be a little higher, about 4,000 more than they originally estimated. So if you've got a reservation in or if uh, you're looking at that, um, the ba it could go up to the battery price alone will be 9,500 euro apparently because you can buy, you buy the car, then you buy the battery separately. I think you guys have a different programs here okay so i'm not mistaken on that so that's not such a bad price though doesn't seem yeah, i mean it's comparative isn't it you guys, yeah i think yeah. so you guys are good with the market so good good to, that sonos is making some progress and hopefully they'll um i don't remember what they told me on there they didn't give me really any firm productions on when they're going to start cranking these things out but everything's kind of next year next year so mm -hmm. i i would anticipate second half of next year mm -hmm. when they get their oh, stuff together start making some some cars so good luck for them so on to, we talked about Kia earlier, uh, especially the Kia Soul, where there's a big announcement, and it's kind of, I brushed upon it a couple of shows ago, if people were not sleeping but paying attention, hopefully, <laughs> uh, that the, that I predicted that the Soul, uh, if it did come out with the 64 kilowatt battery, would be really, really strong for that particular platform and chassis. Well, that's what was just announced in the LA Auto Show this last week for the 2020 model year, that the new Soul, the next generation, will have that same battery that's in the Kona that we're seeing there. Um, of course, the state-of-the-art liquid cool lithium-ion polymer 64 kilowatt hour battery. Um, it will have uh, up to 240 miles per charge. You guys can do the conversions to kilometers yourself. Just look at Google. Um, now, f uh, I think the interesting thing about this is that the torque is really up. It's uh, up from, from 210 foot-pound up to about 291. So that's a substantial increase for a vehicle of that size. Yeah. Uh, man, that's gonna it's gonna go pretty good. It's gonna move. Uh, well, the, the original soul, it was no slouch, was mm -hmm. it? That was it. That was leaf running gear, wasn't it? it was, yeah, uh, yes, yeah. Yes, and yeah. it was it was particularly powerful. Just looking at that, that you've just scrolled past there. Mm -hmm. That looks particularly nice. Nice color as well. Yeah. It looks, well, it looks very One sleek. thing about Seoul is they had these funky colors. You can get yeah, them in yeah. dual. Like you know, each region, Canada has yeah. a, you know it's the EV. You could always tell the EV because it had the funky colors. Well, I'll drive that. <laughs> I'll drive that yeah, in that they're lime not green bad. color. Yeah, it looks, looks really green. Nice. Not as good as our green leaves, oh, I no, might add. Oh, green leaf. Uh, yeah. It rocks, isn't it? The spring cloud for me and the... No, the spring cloud for you and the jade frost is what we called it's it in Canada. Color. It's the same it's color. Different yeah. name. Different name. Okay. Marketing That's 101, cool. folks. That's how it <laughs> happened. And if, I don't know about uh, here, but I was told that in North America they're dropping that color. So in oh. 2019, it's gone. The, By the way, that's an off topic. But just, anyway. just slightly back to the battery for a second. Yeah. The 64, have they confirmed that's the same battery as the... Um, yep, Kona. as the Kia yeah. Nero EV. Because yep. Kia and Hyundai mm -hmm. have got two battery suppliers. You might know this a bit better than me, but I uh, believe they've got two different battery suppliers. I know. Oh, yes, I believe so. I know one of them's LG Chem. Mm -hmm. I know well, that's, that's going to be their main supplier. I would suspect that if they're supplying 64 kilowatt hours to both, I would suggest that it's probably the same pack, but... It, the floor pan, is it an interchangeable floor pan? Do we know? Uh, they didn't say, but I'm. Uh, I mean, the Soul is already a, a vehicle that uh, has an existing platform, where the other ones, I believe, were new platforms, right? I, I think so. I'm not sure how they're going to. I think that's something that most yeah. manufacturers are going to try and move towards now. Mm -hmm. Is is a floor pan yep. that they can literally 
just stick a different lid on. Yeah, a whole modular. You know, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's certainly the way forward. It's yeah. uh, for ease of production, for cost of production. Yep. It's definitely, definitely the way forward. Just remembering that 64 kilowatt hour usable yeah. as well. We forget that. We, yeah. It's always yeah. usable. So pro probably 67, 68 kilowatt hour in there. That's, that's nearly Tesla Model S sort of size. Yeah. In fact, it is bigger than some original oh. Teslas. The 60s, so mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's great. Quite, that's quite the 40s impressive. were the original ones, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, this is uh, more for Europe, but I've, I've talked about the Volkswagen E-Up before, and in fact, when I did a fully charged show, I, I had it on there a little bit. It's a great little car, too bad we don't get it in North America. Well, there's some, there's some price cuts that are hitting the floor now here, especially in the UK, where um, it gets more flair, more options, more standard features, but at a lower price. So apparently it's getting a... Um, uh, about a 3,250 pound or just uh, over 3,600 uh, euros value boost, which means it's about just under 3,000 pounds cheaper or 3,300 euros cheaper, and you get more standard features, including ID adjustments for the driver's seat, rear view camera, uh, new, some other new trim packages. So it gets you out the door with the grant here in the UK of just about 19,6 pounds or 22 and change euros. What do you guys think about that? I think that's, that's really good value for money. I mean, Volkswagen, for all their sins of the past couple of years, <laughs> uh, they do make a very solid car. Mm -hmm. It's very well. It has a huge following here in the UK. Um, I've sold a couple of e-ups. You know, in fact, you drove one from Leicestershire to Aberdeen for me, didn't you? And loved it. It was yeah. a really, really good drive on CCS using Ecotricity, yeah. and it was all faultless, mm -hmm. so we'll add on that occasion. Uh, but yeah, really, really well built car. And you say it charged really quickly. It well, was didn't it? very, very yeah. quick. Yeah, mm. I was really surprised. It was, yeah. it was literally a coffee, yeah. toilet break, and off back. You go. And yeah, uh, I think, oh, almost, almost. I think it's interesting as well. As Nick will probably agree with me here that usually when a manufacturer has a price drop and, a, and a, an increase in the trim and the spec and the options. It only means one thing. Yeah. Well, I totally agree with you on that. There's, there's a reasoning behind yeah, that. Right, there's right, a reasoning. Yeah. You, yeah. you mean like uh, something beginning with I and D and yeah, one? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Possibly. Yeah. You mean you mean yeah. the golf that's not a golf? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> No, you're absolutely right, um, Jonathan. That makes perfect sense. I mean, try to try to get some more of these out as they're continuing to to re you know build those uh, retool those plants for the the IT platform and the AMEB platform but that's coming up. I was thinking, sorry, just briefly, mm -hmm. I was thinking, what else is there for around nineteen thousand pounds here in the UK? Brand new, and, and brand new. Just now, I know Nick, Nick's got to jump yep. in. I'm, 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 he's itching to jump in. <laughs> he's, he's I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, James, but I, I am the Zoe bloke. Yeah, a Zoe. Yeah, a Zoe, yeah. <laughs> yeah you, okay. there you go. Is that with a leased battery or without? No, no, no. That's battery owned. That's eight, battery eight. Owned. Uh, well, it's gone up because of the obviously the drop in the in the the PEG yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, subsidy. Yeah. But I think before it was eighteen seven, so it'd be about nineteen seven now. And that's with forty kilowatt. Forty kilowatt battery, and that is with the slow char charging motor. But if you pay another seven eight hundred pound, you can get the Q forty three kilowatt charging well, motor. I tell you what, if it was a toss up between a Zoe and the E up, I'd go for Zoe. For, specifically for the range and the battery, yeah. yeah I battery mean, and efficiency. Yeah. The yeah. fit and finish, the refinements, the appointments, the Volkswagen would yes. score, the rideability yeah. maybe. But you're right, from the battery and the range, yeah. I mean, it's hard to beat. The, the thing is, I mean, I, 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 anyone who watches my channel knows that I love a Zoe. I, I mean, I drive mm -hmm. it every day. But really? I never would have guessed. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just, for the price of what it costs... It, I think it's an amazing little car. Yeah. And and James, the first time he ever drove a Zoe, he absolutely slated it. And and what 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 have you bought now for your what wife? What do you, what does that mean in American in North slated American terms? It. What do you mean by slated Talk it? Very derogatory about something. Okay, there you go. All right, so we, just, yeah. just that it wasn't. The Remember, first this time. is a global show. <laughs> we have to put it in context yeah, here. It was, it, I've driven many Zoes before. I just. Yeah. Um, I was just a little bit disappointed with the range. It's a 40 yeah. kilowatt Zoe yeah. that we're talking about. But I will add, there is another <laughs> contender there. Um, there's also the Leaf. Although you wouldn't get a brand new one, mm -hmm. you would certainly get a second-hand one. Yeah. Uh, a a, a, a 2.0 Leaf yeah. uh, for a similar sort of price to that. And, yeah. of course... You're looking at 40 kilowatt usable, uh, a 40 kilowatt hour battery yeah. versus, I think. It's yeah. a 18.7, yeah. yeah, in the, yeah, so you're absolutely right. Yeah, you know, 134 so. kilometers, that's WLTP, so e Big EPA difference. probably 115 yeah. or yeah. something, you know. And and so, yeah. you have got the backup of the most reliable charging mm -hmm. network in the country, which mm -hmm. is Chadamo, so yeah. apart, outside of Tesla. So yeah. it's, it's certainly, yeah. if I was going to buy a car now at that price, I, and as much as the, the Leaf has got Rapid Gate, I probably would still go yeah. towards yeah. a Leaf. Yeah. 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 
You're absolutely right. I think that the main reason is exactly what you said, Jonathan. It's a business decision just to string this model along while Volkswagen aims at 2020 and starting to get cars out for that point. So they want to continue to be in the hunt, show that they're doing something, and that's okay because it's just, you know, again, yeah. I think we all agree more choice is better for consumers. Yeah, absolutely. Let them choose, and then whether it's a Zoe or a Yup or whatever. Mm. So excellent. I'm excited about what you're going to talk about now. Well, let's get right into that because he's seeing my script here, even though we don't script, I don't script these shows, uh, folks. I think you guys all understand that. I kind of muddle my way through everyone and try to have fun. Some exciting no- news this week now. Tesla's been talking about you know pickup trucks and all this kind of stuff for a while uh, they have their model x suv of course audi with their their e-tron suv that's come out the mercedes going i mean you know we all know suvs are and pickups have high margins if you're going to make a play into electrification and get into that from a retooling and get companies going start with the higher margin vehicles so you can, like Tesla did, get the yeah. get the, the monies coming in to re put that reinvest back into those things. So, this is a, a quiet company. They've been in stealth mode for a while, just quietly doing their thing. The last couple of years in in California, called Rivian or Rivian. I think it's Rivian if I got that right. Uh, so they they've debuted two really cool vehicles. One of them is the R1S electric SUV. Now this is kind of I don't know Range Rover ish slash. Um, I don't know, you know, there's a few things going on here, but what is exciting, it's a five to seven passenger, but up to 180, 180 kilowatt hour battery, folks. This is, uh, this is crazy, you know, given, now it's going to come in three configurations, 105, 135, and 180 kilowatt hour battery packs. Um, and they're claiming it'll give you a 410 plus mile range. What do you think of that? Why, why are you so excited about that? Because... I've always had this thing in my head about why do Americans need to drive trucks? And that's the reason why. Yeah. Because now yeah. That's, that's been electrified. I look at it and I yeah. think, actually, I could drive around in one yeah. of those. Yeah. I, I, I often drive along and think, why do you need such a big car? And the, Yes, I understand yeah. now. Uh, sorry, talking to a colleague earlier yeah. who was telling me about his, um, was it, a, I can't remember. Toyota his, Tundra? Tundra. Yes, Tundra. 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 Uh, it's it's yep. a 5.8 mm-hmm. litre. Yeah. Yep. It's like, why do you need that? But yep. then if they, if they can do that, then that's that's fantastic. I can you know, understand that. That's a big market. Electrification there. isn't for everybody, right? We know that it doesn't fit everybody's use case. And, you know, you need minivans, you need pickup trucks, you, you know, for whatever applications. Yeah. I get it. We know that there's still a market. And and to see actually companies value that and say, let's, let's, let's go after that. Because, again, it's a huge market, specifically in North America, where these guys, I'm assuming, are going to hit the ground running first mm-hmm. in North America. Um, but, you know, to, to do that kind, even the smallest pack to two, 240 miles, again, is, as we were just talking about, is more than adequate for most um, most situations. I mean, it's got crazy output of um, uh, kilowatt, a 300, 562 or 522 kilowatt uh, output, uh, depending on which model you get, which translates to torque of 560 newton meters or 1120 newton meters of torque. That's outrageous. Um, now, this in conjunction with the pickup truck are four wheel, they're all wheel drive. And the secret they're doing is they're putting a motor on every wheel. So, not just okay. two motors yeah. on the axles, but four motors to give them these. And, and they'll all be computer controlled. So, for, for like limited slip differentials and yeah. those kind of aspects. So, uh, so, what that's really good for is what's called torque vectoring. Yep. So, you can you can literally, and because it's electric, you can mm-hmm. you can move that very, very quickly between each wheel. So Automated. Really for yeah. auto- yep. mm-hmm. And also the transmission losses that you get. So, uh, for example, our, our Model S is rear wheel drive, but it does have a differential. So, you've got mm-hmm. an element of loss through there. Mm-hmm. So, if you're, if you're direct drive, to the wheels, that'll that'll be incredible, especially for for torque output. Um, I'm sure you can answer that. I presume that would also in- increase rejet as well. Um, uh, yeah, because there's an element of loss each way, mm-hmm. whether you're putting it out or whether you're taking it back in. So you, you're going to get loss both ways. So yeah, it would it would limit that. So you would increase effectively what regen you could get in. So um, yeah, it, it works well each way. I remember Volvo were toying with something like that a while back, but I don't think it ever come to fruition. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, but it that, may maybe on their uh, on later yeah, on. Yeah, maybe they may get to that. Yeah, but it's a whole package, 180 kilowatt hour battery. Yeah. So I've, I've got experience in battery packs yeah. plus 100 kilowatt hours, yeah. Yeah. and they are gargantuan. Yeah. But that's the only vehicle that's going to take currently in, in the it's, energy it's density we've got. It's going to brand take new platform designed yeah. up to hold these batteries. That's the fantastic, secret, right? Though, yeah. That's, that's fantastic. And if you want to tow, you know, a caravan or a trailer, as we yeah. call it. 
North America, you can tow 5,000 kilos, anywhere from 3,500 to 5,000 kilos on the thing. Wow. Now, what we really need, I think you mentioned it before, we all need water fording depths of one meter. So this thing will go through one meter of, of wading through water, basically, or water fording, as they call it. Yeah, That's something we need. Especially with global warming. We're yep. not going to need that. It's true. It's <laughs> yeah. happening. It's happening, and, <laughs> you know, if you want to chase Kate up a mountain, this thing will climb 45 <laughs> degrees, too. So, you know. <laughs> so, so now it's, uh, Kate, yeah. watch out. This yeah. thing's coming after you now. Yeah. And, you know, and the biggest frunk that you will see, frunk, that's front frunk. trunk, folks, of 330 liters. Um, there's a couple of uh, tattoos from Fantasy Island you can shove in that thing and yeah. still have room for a six-pack of beer. So uh, it's amazing. I mean, it's all good. These are, you know, you talked about, we're, we're, we're laughing a little bit, folks, but all kidding aside, markets have characteristics, right? Geographies. The North American market is different than the English market, yeah. the UK different than other parts of Europe, different than China. You have to cater to those. And in North America, specifically the US, but Canada is not far behind, Pickups and SUVs are by far the number one selling vehicles for all manufacturers. I think, I think the exciting thing for me is, I mean, personally, I don't like big SUVs, mm -hmm. yep. 4 x I mean, the front of that, to be honest, in my It's going to take some getting used to. Is, is as ugly as sin. Yep. But the interesting thing is, we're seeing these manufacturers spring up from absolutely nowhere. I've yep. never heard of this company. Yeah, right. And immediately they're going, right, we're going to build a car. And I think yep. the nice thing is, they haven't got to get a gearbox manufacturer or an engine manufacturer or what. It's relatively simple, right. I know it's still costly, mm -hmm. but it's great to see these businesses backed by obviously serious money mm -hmm. coming out with new products. I think it's great. I mean, the good news is they will probably sell very well in Italy as well. With a front that big, you can fit at least two, three bodies in there, I reckon. Oh, that's so, Absolutely. Yeah. So the, the black mafia mobiles will be, no, no, no. We, I have a lot of listeners in Italy. I love you guys. You know, don't, uh, we're just clowning around. But yeah, you're absolutely right. It, you know, it's going to be, it's going to appeal to certain marketplaces. And uh, again, you know, to, to your point, Jonathan, that these companies are popping up, you know, the Sonosos, the Rivians, yeah. you know, the... Um, Unities, all these guys mm -hmm. that are popping up that have serious money, that have a plan, yes. and that are going to execute on that plan and have a real chance of impacting mm -hmm. the marketplace. Absolutely. And I think looking behind it, yes, there's serious money and there's the desire, but the desire's only there if they can save financial payback. Absolutely. You know, some, so there's some serious investors looking at the world scene, EV-wise, and going, we need a bit of this cake, we need a bit of this action, where can we yeah. throw some money, where's a little startup? And I think that's great, that the fact that big business can see there is a sea of change coming yeah. and they mm -hmm. want to get a part of it. Yeah, also something to add to that is the, the trucks. Is that what you call them, trucks? Mm -hmm. the trucks. The, the maintenance and the repairs mm -hmm. that go into there. And yeah. sometimes the breakdowns of those engines, which are big, 5.8 litres, yeah. for example, can be catastrophic mm -hmm. and cost huge, huge amounts of money where the EVs uh, really bring that maintenance cost down and, and simplify yeah. it hugely. So... Uh, Especially with no transmission as well, so yeah, it's, well, it's, yeah. It's, it's looking, it's looking good. It's looking Adds good. to Jonathan's point about you know again EVs have less parts, so mm -hmm. you know in a normal transmission that might have twenty th or drivetrain that might have twenty thousand parts, an yeah. EV has about a tenth, let's say two thousand. Yeah. So you know again you can build these things leaner, meter, get them mm -hmm. and stronger. You know, kind of like Bionic six million dollar man. So. And the lower center of gravity, you might yeah. go around the corner. Yeah. Now, nobody yeah. laughed at that reference. Uh, maybe you, you got that? it. The bionic $6 million man. Six, I hope there's no that. copyright. We're of the same age, aren't we? I know, we are. That's yes. why you, these guys are going, what the hell are you talking about? The, the guy with yeah. the bionic yeah. guy. The guy with the bionic guy. I remember that. Exactly. I used, so, to, I used to have a model of him. He used to flick. Yeah. No, that, yeah, was that the guy? Yeah, he used to be in the back of his head. Hey, listen, he paid to get you laugh. He was in the back of his head. Because it was like a telescope. That's right. A magnifying glass. Magnifying glass. I had one as a kid. That is off topic. Well, that is. That's okay. I, we spun there. It's okay, Sorry. but it's all part of the, the charm of the show, hopefully. Or did I just lose a whole bunch of subscribers? We'll see what happens. It's all right. You know where to go? Yeah. <laughs> James and Kate dot. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, truck comes to market first sometime in 2020. 2020 is that banner year. Even Trev and I started talking about that on our first show, that uh, everything was coming to fruition uh, as long as the world doesn't self-destruct by then. By 2020, now the RS, uh, the R1S in this version will come in. So the truck's coming first, and then, then the SUV is in 2021 from the same company. Now, uh, go ahead and I'll bring up my slide about the truck, but because that's exciting as well, the pickup truck. I, I did, I did see the um, the truck, and it's got a panoramic roof. 
Yeah, I've, it I've does. never seen yeah. that before. Yeah. I think that is amazing. That's yeah. really. There's already some good videos out. Alex on autos, like we all know yeah. Alex. Oh, he's yeah. just put up a good review of, of the pickup truck, a good walkabout. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple others out, but have a look at this. So the same company, this the same specs from this pickup truck. Um, again, it's a solid market. It's got some really cool storage options, which were behind the, the back seats. You could put a uh, surfboard. You could put these long things, skis, all that kind of stuff uh, that you can do on that. Now, you, to your point, uh, they've invested uh, millions uh, in their plant, and I guess the plant is in California. I'm not reading where that is. Uh, but this pickup truck is a five-passenger truck, so you know your standard all in pre- with, with that same powertrain. Now, each motor, by the way, we talked about the motors earlier being four of them. Mm-hmm. Each one has 147 kilowatt power output uh, at the wheel. That's the same as wow. in this Leaf. Yeah, that's that's standard. Standard. just really? one. Just that's yeah, just wow. one. Yeah, it's like four. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to the wheel with a total, uh, depending on the configurations, can be 300 kilowatt to 562, 562 kilowatt. Mm-hmm. That's input to the gearbox, which is really a single. I don't, it was not, not a changing mechanism, so, right? So it, has drives, got, so it has got a transmission and a reduction gear. Look, yeah, it sounds like it might have yeah, some, maybe yeah, they don't yeah, blow the thing up yeah, because yeah. there's so much power. Uh, but I'm, you know, so, and uh, to top it off, wait, there's more, you know, as your <laughs> infomercial goes. Uh, you can get up to 160 kilowatt of fast charging. So, so now, yeah, yeah with an 11 kilowatt uh, onboard charger for level two. That's quite impressive. So, was there any pricing on that, Ken? There isn't, uh, other than you know you can pay you can payload the pickup truck eight hundred kilograms of payload okay. in the bed and towing up to five thousand kilograms uh, and some more stuff about space. Nothing about pricing, and that's interesting. Oh no, sorry. Here we go. So the pickup truck will start at sixty nine k US. You can convert that down. That's pretty wow, cheap that's when you cheap. yeah yeah because yeah. yeah. you get a you get a one of those. Um, Harley Davidson or these high end edition F 150s, and you're in that 65K range. So um, that's going to compete with that. Um, And then they're taking $1,000 deposits. So put the video on pause, run out, do your deposit, then come back and continue on with this if you're interested. So post Brexit into the UK, we're talking 100K. (laughs) <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> you call that one. But no, that's that's some serious, uh, yeah. decent money. I mean, yeah. yeah, we know EV still costs a bit more. The cost yeah. parity isn't there. But for what you're getting in this thing, and again, you get the one meter wading through water and all this kind do, of do stuff. Do you think so. these manufacturers are looking at the model that Tesla did, which was something similar, and are they just trying to perhaps copy it? Well, everybody. I mean, yeah. why why reinvent the wheel, yeah, so to speak? Right. If there's a uh, yeah. if there's a formula that's working, success is already proven. Just do that. Yeah. And Tesla's still alive. I mean, you know, people didn't yeah. think they'd be alive this this time. They're making money and they're now showing profitable mm-hmm. quarters and continuing to move forward as they don't have to keep investing. Mm-hmm. I just read the other day they spun up the Model Three to seven to a thousand a day now for production. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah, that's so you know, seven seven a week, and that's what they wanted to hit, and, and even that's more. Good. With with that in mind, Ken, how does that compare to um, the price of a similar kind of truck? Well, like I said, the higher end F one fifties definitely would be probably a little bit lower. You know, sixty-five to seventy-five thousand Canadian for some of the higher end, the lariats and this kind of models. Are they pumping out similar power? Uh, yeah, I mean, they'd have similar specs. And to your point earlier about about things that can go wrong, but you've got you know all-wheel drive, four-wheel drive systems that are pretty complex. You know, dual you know differentials and all this yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah. So there is more stuff that can go wrong. They're bigger, or heavier, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So. And Can these be petrol or diesel over there in Canada? They do uh, the they're both. So depending oh, okay. on, you can get different engine choices. You can get dualies if you really want the heavy-duty ones. Okay. Uh, and the de- generally for the bigger uh, applications like pulling uh, fifth wheels or yeah. uh, really heavy cargo, people are getting the diesels. Absolutely. Just to get that torque, right? You need that yeah, instant, yeah. that lower end torque. We've definitely got the torque, haven't you? With the, uh, with the yeah, I mean that's you know you know how these numbers translate. I mean that yeah. thing's uh, there's no zero to sixty or anything, but I, I think who cares? I mean you're not. You're not buying. There's a few guys. You know, one guy buying a Toyota Tundra that wants to go zero to sixty fast, but that's a different story. Yeah, yeah. We won't talk about him, but uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's it's it, they're going to do really well. Mm-hmm. So we'll see what happens. And uh, yeah, go put your thousand bucks if you want, and uh, go from there. All right. So uh, we're going to get on to one final article now. Unfortunately, Nick had to leave um, because we're running real late here on taping this show. But I want to thank you for joining us. So one the last thing that really caught my eye in this LA Auto Show. All kinds of stuff happening, and that's where it happens. Usually on auto shows is the Audi e-tron GT. 
If you've had a chance to look at this car, it's a slick looking car. It debuted a few days ago at the LA Auto Show. Um, I personally think it's going to look very, like 99% of what you see now is what it's going to be. They say it's a concept car. I think just my mm -hmm. gut feel that this is production. I mean, everything in there is something that they can do today. I don't think there's anything that futurist, futuristic about it. Um, but it's a great looking car. And again, Audi, yeah, they may be slow to the game and people are bashing them a little bit. But I, again, I think the e-tron SUV is a great vehicle. Um, it's going to do really well in those marketplaces. Now, so this uh, e-tron GT is scheduled for production volume in 2020 or late 2020, so probably 2021 by the time it gets out there. It's an all-electric, a battery electric vehicle. Now, right now, of course, Audi does have, they're gearing up to ship out the uh, SUV, as I mentioned, but they also have electrified their e-tron sport back, but that's a plug-in hybrid. Mm -hmm. They did that uh, a little, a few years ago. Um, a 90 kilowatt hour battery, so I'm assuming the same battery that's in the SUV. Uh, I believe it might even be the same chassis, if I'm not mistaken, the same platform, I should say. Range of 400 kilometer, uh, 250 miles WLTP. Probably not surprising because this thing's going to be quick. Mm. Comments. After uh, you, what do you think? Yeah, if you scroll back on your notes, yep. the front of it, it reminds me a little bit of, uh, of the new Jaguar I Pace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, a little bit. It's got that gaping yeah, kind of grill. I know it's all down to marketing and it yep. looks nice and aggressive. But it's not very aero, is it? No. You know, it's not going to be very efficient. And I think in this, I know everything, well, I think everything is about efficiency. To get the most mm. range, the most efficient out It's pretty of, aero there. I got pictures uh, oh, as we are talking. Yeah, so I, yeah, yeah. Still, still very, mm, yeah. still very, you know. But that's, that's their look though, right? I like it. I like it too. I looked yeah. at it going, wow. I, I mean, love the back. Did you people, see the back? On yeah, the people are comparing yeah. it to the Porsche Taycan. Yeah, that's, 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 that's right, a right. representation, I think. Uh, 434 kilowatt peak power output, you know, 0 to 63 yeah. and a half, uh, 62, so 0 to 100K kilometers per hour in three and a half seconds. Um, 800V battery system, 80% in 20 minutes, the fast charging, all that good stuff. Check box, check, check this, check this, yeah. check this. I mean, they seem to be doing anything. Uh, 434 kilowatt output, 590 horsepower. Good figures, mm -hmm. all, all very good. Mm -hmm. The only thing I will say is it's a beautiful car. It, it looks phenomenal and all them figures look really good. For now, I think that it, you're saying 2021? Mm -hmm. If you bring Late them 2020, out, yeah. yeah so mm -hmm. it, it, looking back at the Mercedes EQ that we've just had, yep. uh, the range of that is just, it's just not up to speed. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can buy a car uh, and it, you, what you've got to look at is somebody in a Mercedes EQ that can't go as far as somebody in a Kona. And they're yes. two very different cars mm -hmm. at very different I price points. I should hope they are. Yeah, <laughs> and at different, different price points. Yeah. So, so ultimately, ultimately, with that, you can have some people who are very upset because they can't go as far as a man in the Kona who's can paid you, less than half the price. Can you just imagine the scene? Keel Services, which is a motorway service in, in the UK. Not a very nice one. <laughs> Where just off the, off the motorway, the main freeway is, uh, is uh, a rapid charger. Can you just imagine the embarrassment of spending all that money on that beautiful looking? It's probably going to be over hundred grand. I mean, there's no Guaranteed. question in my mind. There yeah. goes your Hyundai yeah. or your Kia. Yeah. That, yeah. that is going to travel for another at half 80, the price. 90 miles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The price. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, compelling. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, f I feel and and some of these figures say so obviously not the naught to sixty and mm -hmm. the five hundred ninety brake horsepower, but when you mentioned the range, mm -hmm. the range was two fifty miles. Yeah, right? that's WLTP right now, so EPA will be so, even lower. But it depends until it's analyzed, but so usually my yeah. seventy five kilowatt Tesla Model S, I can just about get 240 miles out of that. There you go. So, yeah. and, mm -hmm. uh, so, and that's that's driving it nicely, mm -hmm. but it's at 70. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think it's fair to say that by 2021, that's, yeah. I think that's going to be a little bit behind. Yeah. And at 100, yeah. 100 yeah. grand, I think that's probably not even going to be a thing. Mm. I reckon they, that will, because it is still concept, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. I think that might miss its market. And, it might. Well, yeah. It's such an exciting time yeah. because it's manufacturers that are, really raising the bar that may be just slightly ahead in yeah. five or ten years time but those that are raising the bar to what we would like now but not making it for another few years yeah, yeah. are going to be way behind in yes. another few years yeah that's, mm -hmm. that's really interesting just uh, to stick another spanner in the works as mm -hmm. well um there are some other manufacturers which build similar quality cars that i know of uh which are bringing vehicles to market at around about the same time uh, which will have bigger batteries, 
and higher performance figures than that. Yep. So, so if there if there is a little bit of uh, dent in in Audi's armor, it yeah. could be you know again as you're saying, yeah, I think so. Just a little bit weak on that, but we'll have again. I, it, it's early; it could change. We, we don't right. want to think we're knocking this no. great manufacturer because no. at least they're doing it. Yeah, but he just, I agree. Uh, it's great; we applaud it, but maybe it's just not quite enough. No. The the other point to add to that is um, when you're looking at the e-tron. Mm -hmm. The e-tron, not the GT. Mm -hmm. Looking at the e-tron to try and the test SUV, drive yeah. it mm -hmm. or to try and buy it, yeah. is the figures are low, the production figures are low, and right. uh, uh, obviously you don't want to spend that much money without test driving a vehicle. But trying to get a test drive in one of those is, yeah. is well, it's a unicorn. Yeah, so, so that's why it'll be a little bit longer for it to yeah, come out. And you're absolutely. right, I believe it'll be limited production as well. Yeah, this sure. is more uh, their higher end approach. Yeah. So. Um, you know, from a sports car, but again, like as you said, glad that they're doing it, and they've got a little yeah. unique twist in this one that they're going to offer it with wireless charging at 11 yeah. kilowatt, which is different because uh, there are wireless options you can get today, but they're very slow. Yeah. If they can come out with that and, and it sticks, that's pretty cool. You just drive in and park, and off you go. Uh, uh, start uh, charging. I don't really know that much about wireless charging, mm -hmm. but I can't. I can imagine there's quite a lot of uh, efficiency loss. I think there is, there is yeah. yeah. It takes longer, yeah. Yeah, yeah and absolutely I right. And for me, Nikki on Transport of Old had mm -hmm. an aftermarket one. Yes, she did. Mark, one mm -hmm. brief, yeah. And, and she noted there was some efficiency yeah. loss. Yeah. yeah, I did see that. The, the For me, I'd rather just plug it in. Yeah. yeah. It's just it's just a, a, yeah. a two-minute thing, isn't it? I yeah. Think. I'm, I'm happy to plug it in. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. Well, listen, guys, that's the end of the show. Um, you know, we had a lot of stuff to cover. I thought the, the LA Auto Show, a lot of breaking news coming out, and I thought it was exciting, and I'm really glad... And thankful that we're able to hook up here as I'm as I make one of my last trips out here for a while and probably until fully charged next year. That you guys could come out of your way uh, a little bit off the beaten path to come and see me. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. You want to tell folks how they can reach you? Uh, yeah, well, just like they to say, well, you. thanks for having us over, Ken. It's been oh, uh, it's been amazing and it's always a pleasure. Um, if you want to catch up with us, we just look for James and Kate on YouTube. And if you go onto Twitter, you can find us at Kate Phantom and you'll find everything you need to know there. Yeah. Follow them. Great channel. Jonathan, <laughs> um, how can they find very, you? Very similar. So my website is mm -hmm. eco-cars.net. And uh, I've also got a little website. Uh, it's not a sales website. It's called usenissanleaf.co.uk. And it just helps people to see the different trim levels, of different leaf, and sort of its, uh, it's uh, evolution, if you like, over the years to present day. Um, Eco Cars One on Twitter, and my just my name on YouTube. I wasn't as interested as uh, James and Kate. It's just my name, Jonathan Porterfield. <laughs> that is our name, James and Kate. Yeah, well, that is our name. Yeah, okay. Well, your sounds just a bit more sort of yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, where I do some very poorly edited videos with great sound. But we're all getting better. <laughs> we're all very, very. We're all learning off each other. <laughs> well, thanks, you, for having exactly. Me, James. Oh, honestly, it's, it was such a legend. Well, I don't, I don't know about any well, legends. Uh, yeah. Maybe by yeah. age, but I don't know. But we're about the same <laughs> age, so we're both legends. And of course, you can, you can find me. Uh, please send me responses. Tell it, tell us how you like the show. We, you know, so I try to do some, you know, liven it up a little bit once in a while. Send me an email to evrevolutionshow at gmail.com. I'd love to hear your feedback. Comments, of course, on YouTube, as everybody does. And I love the comments. I try to read those. Twitter, uh, at evrevshow is my Twitter handle. So please follow me. And I always try to retweet what these guys are doing as well. They keep things lively. Uh, on YouTube, of course, the EV Revolution Show. If you have not subscribed, please do. That would mean a lot. Uh, I would certainly enjoy that. And click that bell so you can get those instant notifications when it, this this show and others get, get pushed up. If you're following me in the audio podcast, but you can check them out. Just search EV Revolution Show or EV Revolution Audio Podcast through your iTunes, through your podcast player connected to iTunes. Google Play, it's on there. I'm on Spotify. I'm on Stitcher as well and maybe something else. I'm starting to lose track. There's just so much stuff. <laughs> There's so much stuff to think about now. It's not just one social media or whatever, right? Busy yeah. times. Oh, man. So please check those out. And then finally, uh, you know, again, always a heartfelt thanks to my Patreon supporters. It means a lot to myself. And I know these gentlemen, they get Patreon support for us to do what we do to try to get the message out, including Nick as well earlier. Um, you can look that up at www.patreon.com forward slash EV Revolution Show. And if you're interested in helping me, that would be great. Even a dollar a month uh, can go a long way. I have no minimum, so whatever you'd like. To, I think a dollar is the minimum just by Patreon standards. But if you're interested in helping me out, please do. And that's it for the show. Again, my sincere thanks for you gentlemen uh, coming out to join me and to helping me on this show. And until next time, everybody stay safe and we'll see you then.
This episode of the EV Revolution Show is sponsored by File Sanctuary. Need a great web host for your business? Need to get email at yourdomain.com? They provide professional, feature-rich web and email hosting for any project you have in mind. Get started today at filesanctuary.net forward slash cloud and save 10% with promo code EVREVSHOW. Thank you.